Hello and welcome to another episode of the Thoughtfully Made Fiber Vlogcast. My name is Amy Schur and I am a knitting pattern designer and sometimes sewist, spinner, spinner, weaver, and gardener here in St. Louis, Missouri. Every two or three weeks or so, I check in here on YouTube and show you all the things I'm making. Not just knitting, not just work, um, just to share about my making process and um, the way I think about things and how I choose certain design elements or certain gardening things, that kind of thing. So today I'm here to talk to you all about summer knitting. So I will confess, before I became a designer, I did not do any summer knitting, at least not for myself. Um, I've done some like linen tank tops for my kids from other people's patterns, and those are fine, but I'm not like generally a big fan of summer knitting. Um, I've changed my mind, but at first I was like, well, I can sew first of all. And second of all, linen, like knitting with linen, which is my favorite summer fiber is so miserable. It's horrible and it hurts my hands. And then the fabric often wants to bias when it's like 100% single ply linen and it doesn't look nice. And I've just never enjoyed it. Like I made one linen top before and the pattern was wonderful, but the fabric biased horribly. And I still haven't like brought enough courage to myself to re-knit that one in a different fiber, but just the unpredictability and difficulty of working with linen really put me off summer knitting. And as a designer, I always want to be like not only designing to what my customers would like, which I do, but also like, you know, maintain my North Star, what I want to be knitting, what I want to be wearing, the things that I love and bring me joy. I think that's how you come up with like authentic designs that other people will resonate with. And it's just good business to like be authentic and really make the things that you care about. So, um, I've got a mic, I've got a new mic and it's like distorting the view. Hang on. Let me see if that, let me see if that helps a little to move it down. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Anyway, um, hopefully this new mic will work, by the way. I apologize for any like awkward disruptions and technical difficulties. And I guess while I'm here telling you about that, I will also tell you that all the patterns and all the yarns that I talk about today will also be in the description below. I try to take pretty good show notes, so um, it'll be available there for you to use. Um, pretty straightforward. So today I am wearing my Oolong tank. So this one is uh, definitely one of the patterns that I was trying to like figure out how to work around some of the issues that I've had with uh, summer knitting. So first of all, I don't want my summer knits to be fuzzy. I need them to go quick because <laughs> fingering weight yarn in a summer fiber like silk cotton linen is just so unpleasant to knit and I don't want it to go on forever. So the Oolong tank is kind of my answer to that. This is a straightforward tank top that's knit from the bottom up and it has a little bit of A-line shaping, so a little bit of decreasing through to the underarm. It has these gorgeous lace panels, which I previously used um, for the Oolong socks which I previously submitted as a sock pattern to Pom Pom Magazine, which then became the effervescent pullover. But while, um, while I was brainstorming the pullover version, the effervescent pullover, um, which has like totally different lace, so it's not even like the pullover version now, it's just a separate thing. But while I was sketching that, I sketched up the Oolong tank really quick. Um, it's in my notebook from years and years ago. I think like back all the way back in 2021 and I couldn't let go of this idea like it went away for a bit because I was busy doing other patterns and then I came back to it and I just knew that eventually I would have to do it and I it took me time to find yarns that I wanted to do it in and then it became a tea then after some consultation with my friend and colleague Jennifer Parentini it became a tank again and this is where it ended up this is the second version that I've knit, and this is knit using Pearl Soho Linen Quill, which is not quite a summer fabric, but it's like 
a lightweight, very breathable, very drapey, lovely fingering weight yarn that I think works well in the summer and it doesn't hurt my hands to knit. So I would not like garden in 90 degree weather in this top or even in like 85 degree weather in this top, but I do wear it inside where there's AC set at 80 degrees all the time, no problem. Um, it is quite lovely for like office wear or sedentary life. Um, if you work at a desk as I mostly do now, um, this is a great option. The lace leaf pattern is a short repeat and then it just keeps you moving on the pattern because you, you have repeats to check off so then it's not like the same around and around all the time, which is not my preference for pattern knitting actually. I like it when there's like some, like a mostly stockinette with a little bit of interest in this pattern fits that brief wonderfully. The V sits at a wonderful place across the sizes, which was very important to me. Um, I wanted to look proportional across the sizes and all the testers look fab. Um, I will link all the testers below so you can check it out, but I'm really proud of this pattern and so many of you have already knit it. So thank you for your support on that. I hope you're really enjoying the knit and enjoying wearing it now that it's getting warmer and warmer in the Northern hemisphere. Um, I've talked about this a lot before, so I'm not gonna go on and on about it, but this is a oolong tank and I just wanted to show off like the new version that I've knit up. I really love the shaping that I've done. That's a little bit different from the front than the back, um, just for various like grading principle reasons. So I'm really proud of the way that this has turned out because um, when it comes to summer knits, I wanna put it on and forget about it. I don't wanna be here like, pulling up bits, adjusting, dealing with folds and like having excess fabric in my armpits. Um, I find all of that so uncomfortable. And I think one thing you'll find in common with all the patterns, all three patterns that I talk about today is that they have really careful and thoughtful, like rounded, gentle shaping so that it doesn't cut into the skin. It doesn't create like nightmarish, sweaty, like sensory issues. Um, I'm very prone to the sensory issues when it comes to sweat. So any little bit that pokes out or folds and causes sweat, any of that is like a big no-no for me. So, um, so that's kind of my personal problem that I'm trying to solve with all of my summer knitting patterns. Now with that said, um, I wanna revisit a previous summer pattern that I've published that you've all loved so much and talk a little bit about the yarns because I realized that I've never talked about one of the yarns in it before. So let me go ahead and change into that and I'll be right back. All right, so I am back with the coloring book T, which is a high crew neck mix and match kind of a modular pattern with um, different striping options mixed with different sleeve length options, sleeve shaping and body length options so that you can create your custom sweater. And this version is the short sleeve, which was kindly knit up for me by my sample knitter, Hannah. And I will say my upper arm, I've gained a little weight and my upper arm is like a little bit bigger than the size now. Um, this pattern was released last year. So it's been a while and I think I think the fit is still quite good. Like my shoulder hasn't changed significantly, but the upper arm is starting to become a problem. So I would probably, like if I was re-knitting it, I would probably re-knit it a bit looser because in this fiber, the tubular bind off doesn't have as much stretch to it as I'd like. Um, and that said, it's a wonderful yarn and I really like it. And that is a pretty typical struggle for um, for summer fibers is that you have like no wiggle room sometimes. Um, it still fits fine, I just don't love, like, you know, it stretches open just fine, but I have sensory issues and I don't like it close fitting. Anyway, this is knit from Knitting for Olive. It's been a while, hold on. Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. And I just realized I've, I don't think I've talked about it on this vlog before, or if I have, it was too long ago and I can't remember. So um, this makes a wonderful, beautiful drapey fabric. So it like skims over my curves in the most, and I hate that word, I hate this word, flattering way. Like I hate that word, but it just, I don't 
don't know it just something about it just feels so luxurious and smooth and silky and flowy and um, I really enjoyed wearing this even though I found it very difficult to knit the swatch that I swatched with and I had to pass it on to a sample knitter so I don't hurt myself knitting it so if you do not have problems knitting summer fibers that hurt your hands this could be a good option I also have um, I also have a sample knit up with the long sleeve version with stripes. This is all in the pattern um, using linen quill. So that's also an option. I don't have a problem knitting, knitting linen quill at all. I'll knit with linen quill all day. So um, the stripey version is also in the pattern. And then this one has like a cute little edging offset stripe, which I adore. And you, there's just a lot of different options that you can mix and match to make your perfect coloring book tee. So I'm not going to go on forever about it because it's my best selling pattern. So many of you already know about it, but um, just in case you forgot about it, here it is knitting for olive pure silk. Beautiful, wonderful. Love it. Um, it has, I think part of the reason the fit feels so good is that in combination with this particular fabric, the compound raglan really like does the most to shape um, that raglan so that it's nice and curved just like our bodies we don't like straight lines right like we aren't squares and rectangles so um, as much as I can I try to incorporate really lovely rounded shaping and this has that and it just fits so comfortably and there's cute little details like this underarm faux seam with twisted rib and it runs all the way up the arms down to the cuffs if you're knitting the longer version it's just overall like a if i do say so myself it's a nice little pattern with some really nice little details in it so i hope you'll give it a try um and then finally i really really <laughs> i made this video just so i can talk to you about my latest pattern that's upcoming next week i think um let me go ahead and change into that i can't wait to show you all right, so I am back and I am wearing my Slightly Sassy V, which is a pattern with several options built into it. And it is coming next Thursday on July 6th. So please keep a lookout for that. And if, um, if you'd like to knit it, there will be a discount for newsletter subscribers only, which I will put in the description box below so that you can subscribe to the newsletter before the launch if you'd like but um, I am wearing the short sleeve but long bodied version. Let me move you down so you can see it. Okay, so this is the short sleeve kind of longer body option. It hits at the top of the hips. It has some gentle A-line shaping because most of us have a little more hips than we have boobs. So it kind of flows over it and skims so that it fits nicely throughout the body. Um, in size B and above, and I am wearing size v, B, the raglan continues after the body split a little bit to reach the fullest bust point a little bit after the split, uh, which I love. I learned this from my consultant, Jen P, um, because we don't reach the fullest point. People with breasts, we don't reach the fullest point of our bust, like where the armhole ends. We actually reach it a little after, so I kind of sneaky snuck a few extra increases on the front only. Oh yeah, the front on this one and the Ulan tank is a little bit wider than the back because I am a little wider in the front than the back. And let's see, what else? Beautiful raglan shaping that fits like a charm. This sample was also knit up by Hannah Graham because I was quite sick when I was designing this and I didn't have time. So I was, uh, so Hannah kindly knit this up for me when I was recovering from illness and working on the oolong tank and trying to catch up on everything. But oh gosh, I just really love the shaping on this V, which is finished with like a lovely cunning little eye cord edging. And it also has, of course, this and the oolong tank both have bust starts for those who need it. It's just, uh, I love it so much. And So the sample that I am wearing is Linen Quill and it's very comfortable to wear. I've talked a lot about it in this video, so I'm going to stop. Um, you can see it's probably like my favorite spring to summer fiber. So um, this sample was 
This pattern was designed like basically knowing that linen quill was going to be like a home run, very easy fit for me. So I designed it around the linen quill, but then I had Hannah knit up this cunning little longer version. So this is De Rurum Natura, which is a brand that I've really come to love. And it has these beautiful decreases so that it sits like right past the elbow right there. It has the same gorgeous v-neck that lands in the same spot, the same I-cord. Although this one, I will say, feels a little firmer and more substantial because the yarn is firmer and more substantial. It is a little bit heavier weight, like a straight fingering rather than like a light fingering. Um, it is 80% merino and 20% silk. So it still has a little bit of airflow, but it'll take you to winter for layering under coats if you'd like. Um, so it's much more of a transitional piece rather than the summer piece with linen. Um, I really love this yarn. It's super soft um, and even though it is non super wash, I find it to be quite smooth and gentle to the touch. Um, I love the way the raglan sits with a little more structure and a little less drape on this yarn. So those are kind of the big differences. Um, I also had this one knit up cropped just for fun. Um, typically in samples, I do like, you know, practically speaking, I do long sleeve paired with long body. But in this case, I wanted to kind of reverse that trend a little bit and do the long body with the short sleeve because actually in the summer, I wear like quite a variety of bottoms and I like a little bit more coverage over here in my midriff sometimes. And sometimes I want a crop top. Um, it just depends on my mood. And with this pattern, you can knit up like all four versions if you want, you know? Lots of different options there, mix and match. Um, let's see, what else is there to say? The bust starts are looking real good on a lot of the test knitters, real excited about those. I feel like I'm really getting into my groove with like bust starts, giving my testers advice, refining the advice within the pattern, helping people find a good bust start fit. Um, as you can see on this sample, when I'm wearing it, the hem lays flat because I don't have as much protrusion in my front tissue but on the dress form she has a little bit of bust tissue here so you can see the hem just gently lift up a bit here and she could do with an inch of bust starts i think what do you think so this is this, this pattern is called slightly sassy v once again it's knit with zerurum natura's albertine or with linen quill, or really like any fingering weight yarn that gets gauged that you want. Um, the options are endless and it's quite um, lovely because I, this time with the coloring book tee, I wanted to design it to be worn alone. Like it's a standalone piece that um, has kind of like a loosey goosey sweatshirty fit. But on this one, um, Jen, my consultant, advised that I can go quite a bit less on the armhole because the v-neck will a, a lot of extra fabric here will actually pull open the v-neck which we don't want we want the v-neck to stay exactly where it is and then also the other thing that was of great concern to me was that one of my testers actually knit up like three or four stephanie um stephanie of edible thoughts makes actually knit up three or four coloring book tees but she did say that she wished it had a little armhole ease in one of the versions she knit just because she can't wear it under coats. So with that in mind, I wanted to design a closet staple that does fit under coats and can be worn standalone. Now, I prefer a little bit more of an armhole, like loosey goosiness, but if you want more of a close fit so that you can fit it under bulky, winter coats easily also and you don't mind that armhole being a little bit more fitted and it's comfortable it's not bad it's just like a standard tee this is more for you uh, so to summarize the coloring book tee has more of like a light sweatshirt throw it on over whatever else and it is the outer layer kind of like light light pullover um, sweatshirt vibe and then this one's more of like a standard fitted tee that just skims over your body and feels like very little, like feels like nothing when it's on. And it's not gonna bother you throughout the day. It's gonna sit exactly where it is. You can see I'm moving around and that shoulder is, <laughs> I feel so silly doing this. 
but um, in all my maneuvering, the shoulders, the neck sits exactly where it should be. So if you choose the right size, and I do give advice about that in the pattern, um, it's gonna fit. So um, if you knit it to spec and you choose a good size for you, it's gonna have, it has features that I'm not gonna say it's gonna fit because every body is different, right? Like I designed to a size chart. Um, I take that back. I designed to a size chart and I hope that it will fit as many bodies as possible because that's what the size chart is, right? It's like an amalgamation of a huge population of people and hopefully if you have good <laughs> design principles, it will fit as many bodies as possible. But in the pattern, I also give lots of suggestions and places for adjustments for those who have a body shape that's different. So I give a few hints on where adjustments can be made. Um, to me, a good basic staple garment has to be maneuverable, right? Like it, if I'm gonna design and release yet another basic raglan pattern, then I want it to be the best fitting and has options and offers you something that isn't in maybe some of the other patterns or is unique to this pattern. Um, I won't say that it's better than other patterns because some people love that like blousey look and I do too. I've knit quite a few of those like blousey looking ones and I wear them all the time. But um, I really believe that if I'm gonna launch a basic pattern like this, it has to follow certain design principles and it has to be as good as it can be. Um, all my patterns do. And this will be out on July 6th. It's called Slightly Sassy V. You can see um, some early pictures from testers on Instagram with that hashtag. And I hope that you will love this pattern as much as I do. Um, I'll talk to you very soon. Thanks for watching.